In this video, we will cover the configuration of an iSCSI target on Windows Server and Server Core, configuration of an iSCSI initiator on Windows 11 and Windows Server, preparation and mounting of an iSCSI disk in Windows, and preparation and mounting of an iSCSI disk in Linux. In this environment, we have one, Windows Server 2025 as an iSCSI target. One, Windows Server 2022 Server Core as an iSCSI target. A Windows Server 2022 Server as an initiator. A Windows 11 as an initiator. And an Ubuntu Linux as an initiator. There are two networks. One normal domain network and a separate storage network dedicated to iSCSI traffic. The steps detailed here to set up an iSCSI target are practically identical for Windows Server 2025, currently in preview, 2022, 2019, 2016, and 2012 R2. First, we have to prepare the storage network adapter. Open Server Manager, select Local Server. Click Settings next to the storage adapter to open Network Connections. Right click the adapter and select Properties. Uncheck all bindings except for Internet Protocol version 4, TCP slash IPv4. Select IPv4 and click Properties. Set the IP address as necessary. Since this is a dedicated network for storage that does not need routing or name resolution, we only need IP address and subnet mask. Click OK to close the IPv4 properties window and click Close. Again, right-click the adapter and select Properties. Click Configure and select the Advanced tab. Under the Property listing, click Jumbo Packet and select the value 9014 bytes. Click OK and close the network connections window. Next, we need to enable ping replies, otherwise known as echo requests. This is optional, but recommended as it eases testing. As Server Manager, click Tools and select Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. Click Inbound Rules and select Core Network Diagnostics, ICMP Echo Request, ICMP V4N for the private and public profile. Right click and select Enable Rule. For Windows Server 2019, 2016, and 2012 R2, enable File and Printer Sharing Echo Request, ICMP V4N. Close Windows Firewall. With the storage network adapter configured, we can install the iSCSI target role. In Server Manager, click Manage, Add Roles and Features. Select Server Selection, then Server Roles, and expand File and Storage Services. Expand File and iSCSI Services, and select iSCSI Target Server. Click the Add Features box, and click Next followed by Next. Click Install, and once the installation is complete, click Close. To configure the iSCSI target, in Server Manager, on the left pane, click File and Storage Services, followed by iSCSI. Under the Tasks dropdown, select New iSCSI Virtual Disk. In the New iSCSI Virtual Disk Wizard, select your volume, or use a custom path. For my example, I'm using my iSCSI virtual disk mounted volume. Provide a meaningful name. The description is optional. Choose a disk size and type. At the Assign iSCSI target, click Next. Again, provide a meaningful name for the target. Now we specify which systems 
can connect to this target. Click Add. Select the Enter a value for the selected type radio button. We have four options, with IP address being the easiest for our example. Enter the storage IP address of the client systems. Be careful to not use the client IP address of the adapter that's connected to the normal network. For this example, we are not going to use CHAP authentication. Click Next, followed by Create. Click Close. Now, our server has an iSCSI target and disk that is listening on TCP port 3260 for inbound iSCSI traffic. The steps detailed here are identical for Windows Server 2025, 2022, 2019, and 2016. If not already there, enter the Server Configuration tool by typing sconfig. Hit 8 for Network Settings. Hit the number representing the storage network adapter. Hit 1 to set the network adapter IP address. Hit S for Static. Enter the IP address information. Back at the Server Configuration tool, hit 15 to exit to the command line in PowerShell. If running Server 2019 or earlier, type PowerShell. Prepare the network storage adapter. First, identify the installed network adapters with the get-netadapter commandlet. With our storage network adapter identified, remove all unnecessary bindings, leaving only IPv4. Now set jumbo packets to 9014 bytes. As we did earlier, Enable ping replies to aid in testing. Set Windows Firewall to respond to the ping request using the set-netfirewall rule commandlet. For server 2019, 2016, and 2012 R2. Install the iSCSI target rule using the get-windows feature commandlet. To configure, Create a new iSCSI target and add the allow IP addresses separated by a comma. Create and enable a new iSCSI virtual disk and assign the disk to the target. Our server core now has an iSCSI target and disk and is listening on TCP port 3260 for inbound iSCSI traffic. All the PowerShell commands can also be used for Windows Server with a GUI. And we can verify the configuration via PowerShell. From a client or server that needs to connect to the iSCSI target, we need to configure the iSCSI initiator. As with target servers, we must configure the storage network adapter to use jumbo packets and to remove unnecessary bindings, leaving only IPv4. The Windows client can use either the network adapter properties GUI or the equivalent PowerShell procedures as detailed earlier. Open a PowerShell session and ping the iSCSI target, testing if jumbo packets are properly configured by using the dash L option. The PowerShell equivalent is the test-connection commandlet. Use the test-net connection commandlet to test if the iSCSI TCP port is open. For Windows Server using Server Manager, click Tools and select iSCSI Initiator. For Windows 11 or Windows 10, click the Start flag and type iSCSI Initiator. Read the dialog box and acknowledge and start the service by clicking Yes. On the Targets tab, 
in the target box, enter the IP address of the iSCSI target and click Quick Connect. At the Quick Connect dialog, click Done. Note the IQN name and ensure the status reflects Connected. On the Volumes and Devices tab, click Auto Configure. Close the iSCSI Initiated Properties box by clicking OK. When an iSCSI disk is attached, it is presented to the system as block storage the same way as direct attached SATA or SAS disks. Right click the start flag and select Disk Management. Leave the partition style as GPT and click OK. Right click in the unallocated space and select New Simple Volume. Click Next, followed by Next. Select a driver letter or mount to an empty NTFS folder. Leave the file system as NTFS or select REFS if using Windows Server and provide a volume label. Click Next, followed by Finish. In Windows Server, you can use Server Manager. Click File and Storage Services and select Volumes Disks. Right click the disk that is shown as offline. It will have a bus type of iSCSI and select Bring Online. Read the dialog and acknowledge by clicking Yes. Right click the disk and select New Volume. Click Next, followed by Next, and click OK after reading the dialog. Choose Volume Size and click Next. Select the driver letter or mount to an empty NTFS or REFS folder. Select either NTFS or REFS, depending on usage, and provide a volume label. Leave the Generate Short File Names checkbox unchecked. Click Next, followed by Create. Close the New Volume Wizard dialog. At the GNOME desktop, click Show Applications and select Settings. Click the gear icon next to the Storage Network Adapter. Select the IPv4 tab. Under IPv4 Method, click the Manual Radio button. Under the Address section, enter the Storage Adapter IP address and NetMask. Click the Identity tab and change MTU from automatic to 9014 and click Apply. Toggle the slider to restart the adapter. Open a terminal and ping the iSCSI target, testing if jumbo packets are properly configured using the DAS S option. Use Netcat to test if the iSCSI TCP port is open. For Ubuntu, install open-iSCSI. For Red Hat, install the iSCSI-initiator-utils. For OpenSUSE, for SUSE, install the yast2-iSCSI-client and open-iSCSI packages. To ensure the iSCSI disks are reattached during boot, open the iSCSIID.com file. Uncomment node.startup equals automatic and comment out node.startup equals manual. Save changes. Connect to the iSCSI target and log in. Prepare the volume using either command tools or GUI. In this example, I'm using GNOME disks. Select the disk, click the gear icon, and select Format Partition. Provide a volume label and select the desired file system. Acknowledge the warning and click Format. Click the gear icon and select Edit Mount Options. 
Click the slider. Select the desired mount point and click OK. Click the play arrow to mount. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.